Agent Carter, Season 1, Episode 7, Thoughts. This episode is called Snafu. So, another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. But, in this video, there will be no spoilers for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. So, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. And then there's some links to the videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, my wrists are snafu right now. So, yeah, I did not take any notes on paper, and I will do my best to do the episode justice, because I do think it, it is a very solid episode. Now, you know, I'm going to try to still keep the energy high. You know, I, I did get just a little bit of coke into my system, which will hopefully keep, you know, yeah, keep the energy up. Coca-Cola, not cocaine. Cocaine left my system hours ago. So, yeah, the we opened the episode on the the first time that... I can't believe I still struggle with his name. Uh, Dr. Ivchenko, the first time he used the... the uh, yeah, the, the first time he used it in this sort of... You know, not just for psychiatric purposes. You know, he, he applied it to this situation where, you know, yeah, he, they had no more painkillers. This, this kid, you know, they're, they're going to have to take his legs, you know, because he's, he's getting American health care and he can't pay, so they're going to have to take something. And I do appreciate that he's... Dr. Chenko is in the middle of reading Dr. Faustus. He should have skipped to the end. He would know not to get involved with Leviathan. But, yeah, you know, if you can compel someone to ignore the intense pain of having, you know, having one of your legs amputated, yeah, you, you have very strong influence on the, the mind of the the people you're you're going for uh, that that you're targeting and the 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 fact that he you know the, this thing of making people focus on something that is is really important to them you know f such as family you know yeah the that is a this is, uh, we've seen him do that in earlier episodes, but this was a time where we actually also see the thing that the other person is focusing on, and we have that great little visual element that off in the, you know, behind Dr. Evchenko, you have the, you have the wounded from the war, and he's like, D don't, don't think about that, just focus on you know your your mother and the the chess the chess game and yeah you know a lot of it's it's this thing of you know neither of them want him to go off to war because he might end up you know having his leg amputated while a really creepy doctor tells him to focus on the you know but yeah, so they're, you know, both of, they're trying to process that, and, you know, he's trying to draw the game out, and she's like, you can't freeze time, you know, he's telling her the things that he wants to do when he gets back, and just, yeah, and, and you know, that is actually also, you know, they, they do say, if you're going to go through intense pain, that you gotta focus on what you're, you know, yeah, so focus on something positive, focus on what you expect to be able to accomplish if you get through the pain or, you know, yeah, these kinds of things. And I, right, I, I love the, the soft filter that they put on these scenes, which is, of course, also how we can tell Dooley didn't make it home. This is not him getting home early. This is his mind trying to, to resist 
you know, it's too late for him to, to accomplish much other than saving the lives of the others by, you know, taking himself out. But he's still, you know, yeah, that's a, that's a great little bit of, and I know it's simple, but I do really appreciate the, the decision to have the character that's being influenced be, like, narrating, like, the, the actor in the scene, instead of just voiceover narration. You know, I, I thought it was especially effective when it's Dooley, you know, and he's, he's standing there talking about, you know, I, I make the chicken, which is the one thing I can do in the kitchen, and my wife says it's a real crowd pleaser, which always cracks me up. You know, just great little, just, yeah, you know, I've, I've liked Shea Wiggum for a while. I thought he did fantastic acting here. A, a lot of great acting in, in the show and in this episode. Um, Haley Atwell, very intense performance in parts of this episode. Uh, yeah, and, and yeah, that brings us to the, the, the montage of the, the agents interrogating Peggy. You know, and I, I like how we see, you know, they do have slightly different approaches. Sousa feels very betrayed. Thompson feels conflicted because he's like, I saw you in Russia. You you did something truly selfless. This doesn't add up. You know, there's something going on here that I haven't quite cracked. And I, you know, and... The, the, um, let's see, yeah, and, and the, this thing of, you know, like, we've seen, like, normally Thompson isn't, like, making excuses. He's normally just, okay, you don't want to, you don't want to do the carrot, it's time for the stick, you know. It's, hope you've got good dental care, and he slugs the, the, the person they're, they're getting answers from, which I do believe that that is something that, ah, crap. Was it around that time? I forget exactly when, like, because today it is technically illegal to beat a confession out of a suspect. I forget if that was the case in, not not that I remember the, 19, the year 1946, but I, I read once when it was that that law was passed. I, I don't remember off the, the but, but yeah, you know, he's, he's telling her, you know what I normally do here. I don't want to do it, you know. Let's see. Yeah, and we have the, the detail that, you know, um, yeah, Thompson, yeah, they, they think, oh, Yauk, you know, he got drunk, he, he didn't pay attention to the cars, and yeah. And the, um, yeah, Thompson points out, why is Dr. Ivchenko sitting in on an interrogation, you know, and the, um, I think that might be about what I have to say for the interrogation. Yeah, the, the, um, really great when, when Jarvis walks in and, you know, we see, they made sure to pick, like, perhaps the most non-threatening looking of the, the telephone operators, you know, to, to be the one who, who goes for the gun, because it's like, yeah, they put her there because you look at her and you don't say, oh, sh you know, I bet she, you know, that's a big theme with the show, you know, the, the women that men don't think of as dangerous, you know, the, the um, yeah, you know, the, the, you get, yeah, she, she readies the gun, but, yeah, when, she, when Jarvis says, I've got a signed confession from Howard Stark, you know, hold, please. <laughs> and, let's see. Right, I appreciate the, the line, you know, Peggy says, if you want to hit me, now's your chance to, to Jack. You know, really, like, because it is, the, you know, that's the thing that he normally does and you know she she indicates the 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 cuff and cuff and the uh let's see there was another thing 
Um, but but yeah, you know, Jarvis points out the that you know he's got the the you know he he thought that this would actually mean that he and and Peggy would be able to walk out of there, and Peggy realizes you're the one who wrote it. You know, Stark didn't didn't write it, didn't sign it. The signed paper is not forthcoming. The the you know and the the yeah you know he points out it was it was a decision under under panic and let's see the I think that is about what I have to say about those um, right I I. I like a good, uh, creepy, you know, let's, you know, a, a good creepy scene of someone using, like, children as a, you know, whether, whether it's a creepy child or, you know, in this case, just using the appearance, you know, how do you get a, a container of gas into, a, you know, movie theater? You pretend that, you know, you, you put it in... Of a baby carriage, the nice pram, whatever, you know, and the detail that you know she she chooses pink, not blue, just and and you know crosses her fingers and and smiles and just yeah, just so so creepy. Just I really yeah, and she said you know. You you're not very far along. It's coming sooner than you think, because yeah, she knows that they're just about ready to make the attack. Just again, fantastic acting from Bridget Regan playing Dottie, and that might be about it for that section. So yeah, I I appreciate you know, yeah. Um, if Chenko manages to get Dooley to call uh, his his wife, and you know he does, he does admit, you know maybe he did something wrong here, you know, which is an important part of an apology to to try to save a relationship, romantic or otherwise. I don't love, but it is a it is a very American thing. This idea of oh you know if if someone who who works a job like that if he does actually go home to his wife or or promises he can go home to his wife that's a bad thing you know he's gonna he's gonna let someone slip through his fingers and people are gonna be in danger you know just yeah um, making excuses for these very unhealthy habits like. I get it. I, I'm not saying that we don't need anyone in those situations. I, I feel like Amer American media goes way too hard on trying to make these excuses. Now, that... Let's see. Yeah, I, I like that, you know, Peggy and Jarvis are able to, to pick up the... Um, what's it called? The the coded message, and and yeah, very clever. You know, he he is like the the way he's moving his finger. That that Ivchenko is moving his fingers. Yeah, you could absolutely, you know, do like um, Morse code with with that. You know, all you got to do is be able to distinguish between short and long uh, notes I, f I forget what it's called but but yeah you know and and when like one word ends and that that sort of thing you know and <laughs> yeah Peggy is surprised that he knows Morse code which yeah that is <laughs> Let's see and and yeah you know she goes and you know confesses to all that she does know 
to gain their trust so they'll believe about the 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 yeah the the message that she intercepted and ultimately you know they're not um yeah they're they're not able to accomplish very much which just shows how good Dottie and Ivchenko are how much they have this situation under control and I think that might be about right and I do appreciate you know Jack like tries to you know warn Sousa and Sousa you know at, at first perceives it as like almost an insult and then Jack makes clear, no, I'm I'm not I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm saying you know, be ready. Like I struggle to to deal with one of these when she was like a child. I'd hate to you know what was it I'd I'd hate to deal with one that's grown up. Let's see, and yeah, very clever of Ivchenko to get Dooley to you know he he says oh you know there are ears everywhere which yeah i mean that does sound credible they don't know you know like is it just ivchenko and dotty is there a third person in the office uh, you know and and certainly Dooley might at that point not be entirely sure if there is so yeah he gets you know the two of them into the interrogation room gets them handcuffed I like the the exchange about you know the the you know yeah using the the table as a battering ram. What if there's people? Well, you know, rain of glass, rain of glass, right? What if they have guns? We might be hurt. You know, rain of bullets, right? Just yeah, good little bit of yeah, and and. Dooley and Ivchenko go into the the lab and claim and and yeah Dooley says someone in here is working for the the Russians for the Leviathan you know you you all have to go through interrogations everybody leaves this room and then you know Ivchenko is able to get item seventeen uh, yeah I like the fight between um, Dotty and Sousa, you know, both of them get some good moves in, and I like this, I, you know, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not physically disabled myself, so I'm not saying I'm an authority on this, but I feel like this thing, of, you know, he actually uses the, the crutch as a weapon at one point, you know, resting on his good leg, using it to, to like hit, because it is heavy, you know, I, again, I'm not, here to say, I, I'm not qualified to speak on if it is, you know, entirely tasteful, but I do appreciate that they did at least make the effort to, to give a bit of, like, you know, it's clearly meant to be empowering. And I appreciate the, the detail that, you know, Dooley actually, you know, as he's being, you know, made by Ivchenko to give up, you know, he's like... I feel like I shouldn't give you this, uh, you know, and let's see, yeah, and, and the um, Dottie and, right, holy crap, I loved when Dottie, like, jumped between, what a stunt, that was amazing, that was very, very impressive. You know, she, in, instead of running down the stairs, which would take a while, she just jumps between, that was so cool, holy crap, and, and the kind of thing that you would want someone like that to be able to, because yeah, sometime you might find yourself high up in a tall building and have to get that, because the moment that people are getting in from, from further down, you know, what there's only so much you can do. If you can't do it, like, holy crap, that was more badass than Marvin Sin City. That's no small feat. Uh, you know, if you look at the size of her shoes. But the, the, yeah, um, the, yeah, so the, the two of them, 
Dottie and Anivchenko get in the in the car together, you know, and and she's like, we're you know we're we're blown. They know both of us, and he says, pretty soon they will have way too much to deal with, to to be able to, you know, do anything about us. And yeah, then we get the you know, the the bit of Dooley seemingly returning home, but. You know, because of the the sheer focus and the the sort of the yeah the the colors are a little too vivid kind of thing, we can tell this is this is a dream. This is him working through it in in his mind, and it's also you know when the the way that his wife responds. You know, he says, "I let him I let him get the weapon. Uh, I should be angry. I should be scared, but I just you know." And, and, you know, she says, you know, what, what are you going to do? Like, it's, it's entirely in his head, but he's like, he's working through, we're getting this kind of, you know, it's the kind of thing, like, essentially, you could have done it with voiceover narration, but it wouldn't have hit anywhere near as hard. And I'm not knocking voiceover narration. There's a lot of excellent voiceover narration throughout cinema, but this was a much cooler you know, being being able to convey it in this more visual way was very, very effective. It's the exact right choice. And we get the the vest, which is, you know, very clearly meant to evoke the the suicide bomber vest kind of thing. I, I will say it does feel like the kind of thing, you know, and, and you know, he, he runs to the window, jumps out, and there's an explosion right outside a tall building, because the MCU can only go for so long without getting into at least a little bit of 9-11 porn. But I do 100% believe that Howard Stark would try to make something that just kept you warm in the winter and accidentally make this like device that you know eventually blows you up that is that is 100% on point on brand let's see and you know he gets a heroic sacrifice but before that he does you know it's it's peggy that he asks make sure you know just promise me you'll get this son of a bitch and let's see. Yeah, and you know she, yeah, Dottie sneaks into the the, or, yeah, sneaks the weapon into the movie theater. Goes into the movie theater. You know, and one guy in there is like, oh, great, crying baby during the show, which that's gonna be the least of your worries in about fifty seconds, dude. I, I quite appreciate. I, I don't know if it's real or if they made some. That's probably real. But th this th short film of like Dexter, the kid who refuses to to clean up after himself, like that's exactly the kind of thing that they would show in you know be yeah before a movie starts back then. And let's see the. Yeah, and and the the detail you know, she pretends to to cough, to to explain why she's got a handkerchief in front of her mouth, but in reality it's so she doesn't get any of the gas. And yeah, one guy gets really annoyed at the coughing again. Not gonna be a big problem for very much longer. I'm I I have great news for you, in in less than a minute. You, that is going to be the last thing on your mind. And, yeah, so, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing in the next episode they'll maybe talk about what exactly the the gas is and, and, you know, why it has the effect it does. But, you know, like, people are exposed to it and they become very angry and violent, even even, like, sadistic and cruel. Like, one guy apparently, like, uh, uh, what's it called, like, um, gouges out another's eyes, you know, so I, I guess they were able to, to render into a, a gaseous form, you know, conservative political commentary, and let's see the... 
yeah, and we we close on it being discovered by you know and and yet again you know this this show has a, a woman making a lot of sense criticizing a, a man for something you know she's like six times really you're gonna you're gonna circle the block six times when there's parking right over there you know right across the street and uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I really appreciate how brutal this episode got. Like, you know, you've got the eye gouging, you've got the, the amputation, just, you know, not not super graphic, but the implication is very strong in, in both cases. And that is what I have to say. So let's go through some episode-specific IMDb trivia. So, yeah. The title, SNAFU, is a military acronym dating back to World War II that stands for Situation Normal All Fouled Up. It refers to being in a bad situation and this being the usual state of affairs. There is another version with a different F word. Let's see, and yeah, someone else picked up on the, the thing with Dr. Faustus. Oh, hold on, right, right, the, um, yes, the, Ivchenko's real name is revealed to be Fenhoff, and, you know, that's a reference to the comic book version of Johann Fenhoff, who also uses the name Dr. Faustus. However, the comic book Fenhoff was Austrian, while Agent Carter's version is Russian. Let's see. <laughs> Yeah, and, and someone points out, oh, the, the short animated PSA is from 85, not 46. Or, you know, not before 46. Oh, yeah, that's true. The, the vest that Ivchenko gives to Chief Dooley is made to look like the original vest worn by Iron Man in the original Iron Man comics. That's, yeah, very true. And let's see... Yeah, so I think that might be about what I have to say about the... Right, and the, yeah, you know, after they, they break the... After they manage to break the glass, you know the the oh right and yeah real quick the the montage you know Jack says I'm confused Sousa says I'm sick and Dooley says I'm impressed that was a nice little yeah and let's see. Yeah, and, and Dooley, you know, some of his last words are, tell tell my wife, tell her I'm sorry I missed dinner, which is just heartbreaking. But yes, uh, to close out on a fun quote, you know, they yeah, they managed to break the glass, and Jarvis says, no people, everybody wins. I've just thought of something. We're still attached to a table, we are still attached to a table. <laughs> 